I didn't have a, a mother figure, you know, all through my life. That was like till I was 10, and then my mother died when I was 16, but I didn't really have to answer anybody is what I'm trying to say. So it was very tough to, for me. As a, as a man, it was very tough for me. Like when a woman or anybody asked me, what time are you going to be home? My blood pressure goes up 180 over 100. Don't ask me what time I'm going to be home. Don't ask. I don't fucking know. You know, I like to tell you 11, but what if I'm driving home and there's a, a naked woman that just escaped from a fucking cocksuckers anonymous uh, <laughs> rehab? You know, I'd love to tell you, what if I'm driving home and I got a sudden urge to drive diarrhea and I got to pull over to Manalapan fucking diner and shit my ass off? You know what? I, I don't know. So don't ask. I could try to be home by a certain fucking time, but don't ask. All those things bothered me as a man. Because I didn't have to deal with it growing up, you know, it was all fucking new to me, you know. So when I left Boulder, like after my divorce, I didn't know how to handle a fucking divorce. I didn't know how to handle a marriage. When I first got married, I couldn't handle shit. Do you understand me? I couldn't handle shit. And I'm really fucking sorry about this, that, that I couldn't handle anything when I was married. I couldn't, I didn't know how to communicate. I didn't know how to... You know, I still remember meeting my ex-wife. Like, I was celibate for fucking... Well, it wasn't that I was celibate. I couldn't get a piece because I wasn't doing coke and my confidence was low, so I wouldn't talk to women. You know, I knew how to talk to women when I got coked up. That's easier with three drinks in you. But once you're fucking sober, you don't know how to fucking talk to women. So I didn't fucking talk to, to women. You know, I didn't, I didn't get laid from, fuck, 84, like mid-84, to like June of 85. I was like on a fucking 11 month uh, sabbatical from sex or, or intimate fucking touching or nothing, you know? And then I, all of a sudden, I went on a fucking roll in 85. And I still remember dating my ex wife and moving with her to San Francisco and being alone with her in a hotel room and thinking to myself, wow, I'm living with a woman. Like, there's no preparation, there's no course you could take, there's no, not, not nothing. I met her August 5th, and by August 20th, we were living together in a fucking hotel room in San Francisco. And then by September 1st, we were fucking living in a, in a full-time, you know, those hotels where you have a room and the bathroom's in the hallway and you share it with 20 fucking people. You got to walk there with your robe on and with your fucking shaving kit like a jerk off. I didn't have a fucking robe. I'd have to walk in the hallway with, with a towel on. They'd tell me to put a shirt on. It was a fucking nightmare. But the point I'm trying to make is that I, I didn't know what I was doing. I'm living with a fucking girl. This is great. She's going to clean. We're going to have sex whenever I want. And I was like an animal. Like, I would come home every afternoon. Let's, let me give you a stab. And we'd watch Mission Impossible at 4 o'clock. And after Mission Impossible, I'd give her a fucking stab. And if I'm paying rent, I got to get my fucking money's worth. Like, that's how you think when you're a fucking kid. And you're a young man. You don't fucking know. I wish I fucking knew. I had no idea. And I did the best I could. You know, I treated her like a friend. I didn't fucking know. You want to smoke a joint? You know, I would take her out to dinner. I mean, I didn't fucking know. But then the evolution continues, you know, and now you're you're a couple, and then we moved back to fucking Boulder together, and then we started hanging out, and I got locked up. You know, it wasn't like a traditional meet somebody in high school, go to the prom with them, go to college, you still date while you're in college, and then once you get your degree and I get my degree, we do it the right way, and we get a marriage. I didn't do none of that shit. That, that wasn't in my fucking path. I was a quickie type of dude. I met you, I'm, I either like you or I don't like you. You know what I'm saying? If I like you, I'll call again. If I don't like you, I'm not going to waste your fucking time. I'm not in business to fucking use people. So when I got married, I, got, I didn't get married for all the right fucking reasons. I got married because I knocked somebody up. Did I love her? Uh, who knows? You know, we'll see later on. You can learn to love somebody. That's what I thought. No, you can't. Either you love them or you don't fucking love them. Yeah, people grow on you, you know what I'm saying? But you have to have something there 
to sit around that person every fucking day. If not, you you want to stab yourself in the eye every time they talk. So I know I do. If I didn't like somebody, I couldn't have them around. I'm not that. Th- Listen, I learned a less- lesson early on when I was 16. Don't use people. If you, they're not, you don't, don't. I, well, they got a, a fast boat. You, you don't want to be their friend. Well, they have good weed. Who gives a fuck? Everybody's got good weed. You can buy good fucking weed. You don't need to fucking be somebody's friend because they have fucking weed, you know. But when I got married, I was totally confused of what a marriage was. It just did not work for me. Guys, I mean, a lot of you saw me last October and November and December. I was fucking shit. I was burnt goods. I was burnt the fuck out. Nothing, nothing bothers me more than my time when I was married. From fucking September of 89 to October 15th of 1991. We're coming on the anniversary now of fucking leaving. I was just not happy. I mean, it was brutal for me. I didn't know what, you know, and... Looking back at it, it was a lot of things. It was me getting out of prison, and all of a sudden, I get out of prison, and the next thing you know, I'm getting fucking married six months later, and I'm having a fucking kid. I was over-fucking-whelmed, and something happened to me on the way to the fucking prom. When I got married, I got married on a Saturday afternoon, September 9th, or no, who the fuck knows? Yeah, 9-9 nine, nine of 89, whatever the fuck. So it was September 9th of 89. Check your fucking calendar, Google that date. There was like two great college football games that day. Like Colorado was playing Nebraska. So I was pissed off already. Like I didn't fucking know. I never took that into account that there was a great college fucking football game on the day I was going to get fucking married, you know. So I didn't take none of that shit into account. I didn't even think about it. But... When, when I got married, man, the wedding was great. You know, the reception was great. And then we had to take, get a ride to Denver Stapleton Airport. That was the airport then. We were headed to San Francisco for a honeymoon. And I remember we got on a plane. It was like a 940 flight. Get you to San Francisco like 11 o'clock. It was a 940 flight. I'll never forget getting on that plane with a... You know, like, just coming back from a wedding. You're high on the wedding. My friends were there. Mike Runney was there. One of my best friends was my my uh, best man. You know, I, it couldn't have been any better, you know. I didn't do any coke until the end of the wedding, you know, at the end, because I knew I didn't have to pee till Wednesday. So I didn't do any coke till, yeah, I wasn't coming back till, like, Wednesday. So the pee days for the halfway house uh, for the community corrections was Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I knew I had a green light. I could get high because I, I was going to come back Wednesday, but at nighttime, and they weren't able to piss me on Thursday. They were going to piss me on Friday. 